Humanity is on the verge of returning to the moon this decade, with Starship set to play a pivotal role in this historic mission. In tandem with Starship, NASA is developing additional systems to support this significant endeavor. However, not all of these systems are proving to be effective, with the Lunar Gateway standing out as a point of concern. The Lunar Gateway initiative is currently encountering several challenges, most notably its potential conflict with Starship HLS. What are the specific issues with the Lunar Gateway, and should NASA reconsider this complex initiative? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. According to NASA's current roadmap, Artemis 2 is scheduled for September next year, followed by Artemis 3 and 4 missions in September of 2026 and September of 2028, respectively, with both lunar landings being facilitated by SpaceX's Starship HLS, or Human Landing System. Among these, Artemis 3 is particularly significant as it will mark humanity's return to the moon after more than half a century. However, the subsequent missions, especially Artemis 4, the second mission to land humans on the moon, also hold great promise, featuring several major advancements compared to Artemis 3. In addition to Starship HLS, NASA has proposed the development of a system called the Lunar Gateway. This project envisions a space station operating in lunar orbit, serving as a staging point before the lunar lander transports astronauts to the moon's surface. The Lunar Gateway is intended to support long-term, sustainable lunar exploration and may lay the groundwork for establishing permanent bases and extended operations on the moon. However, the situation is not as promising as it appears. The complexity and incompatibility of the Lunar Gateway with Starship HLS have raised significant concerns. A recent report from the U.S. Government Accountability Office, or GAO, highlighted several issues with NASA's plans, underscoring the challenges facing the Lunar Gateway project. The first major issue with the Lunar Gateway is its schedule. Initially planned for 2022, the project has faced significant delays, with key modules like Halo, IHAB, and other subsystems still in development. According to the GAO report, the first launch of the system has been pushed back to at least December of 2027. This delay poses a significant compatibility issue with SpaceX's Starship HLS. While Artemis 3 will not utilize the gateway, Artemis 4 is scheduled for September of 2028, only about 10 months after the earliest possible launch date for the Gateway. This timeline is insufficient to ensure the Gateway is fully operational and ready to support the Artemis mission. Critical components such as the Halo module and the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, need to be launched at least 12 months before Artemis 4 to be fully functional. Another concern highlighted in the GAO report is the cost of the Lunar Gateway project. The estimated cost until December of 2027 stands at a staggering $5.3 billion US dollars. NASA has already spent significant amounts, $1 billion on the PPE module and $1.3 on the HALO module. This financial burden places immense pressure on NASA, with no guarantees that the project will remain within budget or operate efficiently once completed. Now, let's dive into the complexity of the Lunar Gateway project, which unfolds in eight intricate steps. Step 1. NASA will begin by using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy to launch the power and propulsion element and the habitation and logistics outpost. These two modules will be connected in space and then deployed. Together, they will transit to a near-rectilinear halo orbit, establishing the basic structure of the gateway. Step 2. SpaceX will follow up by launching its logistics vehicle, the Dragon XL. This vehicle is an upgraded version of the current Dragon, featuring a larger size and increased thrust. The Dragon XL will transit to NRHO and dock with the Gateway, providing essential supplies and equipment. Step 3. SpaceX will then launch a depot into Low Earth Orbit, or LEO. Several Starship tankers will be launched to deliver fuel to this depot. Once the depot has accumulated enough fuel, the Starship Human Landing System will be launched and docked at the depot to transfer fuel. After being fully fueled, the Starship HLS will separate from the depot, transit to NRHO, and rendezvous with the Gateway. Step 4. NASA will launch the Orion spacecraft carrying four astronauts and the International Habitat Module, or IHAB, aboard their SLS-1B rocket. This launch will utilize the Mobile Launcher 2 system and marks a critical step in the assembly of the Gateway and the Artemis mission. 
These steps underscore the immense complexity and coordination required for the Lunar Gateway project, highlighting the challenges NASA and SpaceX face in making this ambitious plan a reality. Step 5. During the journey to the moon, Orion will separate from the SLS upper stage and dock with the IHAB module, which remains connected to the rocket's upper stage. After docking, the IHAB will detach from the upper stage, and Orion will then tow the IHAB to the near-rectilinear halo orbit. Step 6. Upon reaching the NRHO, Orion will dock the IHAB into the gateway. The crew will enter the gateway and activate the IHAB module, where Orion will remain docked for the next 17 days. Step 7. Two of the four astronauts will board the Starship HLS, which will then undock from the gateway, descend to the lunar surface, and land. The astronauts will conduct various activities, including moonwalks to collect scientific samples over a period of about six days. After completing their mission, Starship HLS will ascend back to the NRHO and dock with the gateway. And finally, step 8. The crew will transfer the collected science samples to Orion for return to Earth. After securing the samples, the crew will board Orion and begin their journey back home. This lunar mission, involving the Lunar Gateway, illustrates a highly complex process with multiple stages and the involvement of various contractors. Each step introduces potential points of failure, as the success of the mission is contingent upon the flawless execution of each contractor's role. For example, the launch of Orion and the IHAB module will be the inaugural mission for the SLS-1B rocket, adding another layer of uncertainty. In this intricate process, reliance on SpaceX systems such as Falcon Heavy and to some extent the Starship is key, as these systems have demonstrated significant progress and reliability. As we've highlighted, these processes will take an extended period to complete, leading to exorbitant costs. To put it into perspective, consider the massive expenses associated with NASA's SLS program before the Artemis 1 mission. NASA is under significant pressure due to decreasing budgets in recent years, a trend that may continue. This financial strain has forced the agency to cut costs on numerous projects, with some even facing cancellation. Given this situation, is maintaining the Lunar Gateway truly the right choice? Moreover, the Lunar Gateway system also complicates the Moon mission, especially with the involvement of Starship HLS. Before diving deeper into this, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support motivates us to keep bringing you updates on SpaceX's developments. Now, let's compare the sizes. The power and propulsion element and the habitation and logistics outpost are designed to fit within Falcon Heavy's fairing payload meaning they are less than 13 meters long and less than 5.2 meters in diameter. When combined with the IHAB and other systems, the overall size won't increase significantly. In contrast, Starship HLS is vastly larger, 50 meters long, 9 meters in diameter, with a dry mass of about 100 tons. This mass will increase once Starship HLS is fueled for its lunar landing. The disparity in size and complexity between the Lunar Gateway modules and Starship HLS presents significant challenges, both technically and logistically, for the mission. The Starship HLS being larger and heavier than the Lunar Gateway could significantly alter the Gateway's orbit when docked. Attribute this to the size of Starship HLS and its propulsion system, but it's important to note that NASA selected Starship HLS specifically for its lunar missions. The responsibility lies with NASA, not SpaceX. Debates have emerged about whether NASA should eliminate one of these systems, with some suggesting the removal of Starship HLS. However, this would require NASA to completely overhaul its mission plans. Starship HLS is essential for Artemis 3, which is scheduled before the Lunar Gateway's deployment. Removing Starship HLS would jeopardize not only Artemis 4, but also Artemis 3. Without the HLS, NASA would face significant challenges in finding a reliable and cost-effective alternative, as other options like the SLS Project, Blue Origin, or ULA do not currently offer the same capabilities as SpaceX. NASA may need to simplify its approach by potentially canceling the Lunar Gateway. Building and using the gateway for the second moon landing seems overly ambitious. Instead, NASA could focus on Starship HLS, allowing SpaceX to develop launch and refueling systems that are more straightforward and cost-effective. This approach could expedite lunar landings and enable future base construction on the moon without the complexities and high costs associated with the lunar gateway. As we approach the second half of 2024, NASA must make a decision soon. 
especially with China advancing its own lunar plans. Simplicity and efficiency will be crucial for success. Should NASA consider abandoning the Lunar Gateway? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.